All right, guys, remember those annoying birds, the lyrical Lucinias, those birds that would exceed into this monster that would just keep on attacking you directly. Then you would try to destroy it, and they'd be like, Psych, you can't destroy me. Attack you directly five more times. You lose. Well, they got a new monster in their arsenal that you can dump out. Turn one, that's basically towers. Could be better in some scenarios because it does have the ability to actually burn your opponent for a game multiple times, uh, If you, depending on how many monsters you use as material. But it can be a very annoying card to run into. Uh, but the thing is, is that you can deal with this. Get your kaijus ready for the side deck because it's going to be a hefty investment. Kind of like how Towers was a hefty investment for the Klee deck. But I just can't believe that like every deck, why does every deck need a card that cannot be destroyed, cannot be targeted, unaffected by card effects? Like why, why, why Konami? Like you ban Towers and you keep on releasing like the same kind of cards. But uh, anyways, we have the new Lyrical Lucinia Fusion Monster Independent Nightingale. So it's uh, Lyrical Lucinia Assembly Nightingale plus one Lyrical Lucinia Monster. So this card is Fusion Summon using an XC material whose original names includes Lyrical Lucinia as Fusion Material. Increase this card's level by the number of materials that were attached to that monster. Uh, this card gains attack equal to its level times 500. And then it's unaffected by other card effects, period. Really good. Not, it doesn't matter about the level. And then once per turn, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to this card's level times 500. So it's a really dirty card. And I'll show you guys some replays and I'll give you guys a little deck profile so you guys can mess around with the new Lyrical Lucinias. But uh, anyways, I got that young Mystic Piper out here. And you'll see a turn one. This is no pot of desires in here, guys. Uh, if you did that, you could make the deck really consistent. All it really needs to have uh, yourself drawn to is Polymerization. Uh, there's a lot of cards that actually search out Poly. But uh, nonetheless, you can go King of Swamp, Fusion Sage, uh, regular, of course, Polymer. You run like nine copies of it. So the chances of getting just one poly are pretty big. He activates his skill drain. This card's unaffected by everything. He's going to make it so he's going to burn his opponent again. And his opponent's just like, dude, I don't want to deal with this. This card, it just comes out and just wins against certain decks. Uh, I know, you know, Utopia is a pretty good card. But other than Utopia, uh, a lot of decks don't have a main out to it. Um, but uh, nonetheless, let's go and watch this replay. Because this one's pretty cheeky over here. I like this one is a lot of disrespect in this duel over here but anyways he's gonna go ahead and summon the dryas the third the true draco knight so anyways we see the uh mystic piper summon we got the uh turquoise we got cobalt over there and he's gonna go ahead and special summon uh sapphire swallows well wow, my favorite girl in the game uh anyways he's gonna go ahead and exceed into the uh lyrical lucenia and then he's gonna go ahead and go into the fusion one and then uh, he's just gonna go ahead and just burn his opponent for some damage pretty good stuff Completely balanced, man. 3,500, unaffected by card effects, and then I get to burn you for uh, 2,500 every single turn. And, uh, you know, it's a really dirty card. Uh, very, very good against certain decks. Now, certain other decks can get over it, but for the most part, it's like Utopia. That, that's like the out for most decks. You can see he doesn't even need to attack because he can just burn his opponent for game over here. But like I said, there's, there's a lot of disrespect in this uh, duel over here. Uh, the guy's going to go ahead and draw into the uh, Dynamite Knuckle, the Draco Fighter. Then he's going to try to go off here for a, a bigger play because he does have a lot of access to obscure synchros that you normally don't see. So he's going to go ahead and make Dyson Sphere. He's going to attack him directly with that. Uh, but, uh, I mean, if he wanted to, uh, Independent Nightingale can just make a game. All he has to do is activate its effect and burn uh, its game because it's unaffected by everything else. So everything else is pr completely irrelevant. Uh, he has this effect where he can declare an attribute and... Uh, they uh, cannot activate their effects, but again, this card is unaffected by everything and has 3,500 attack. Uh, he throws a Jester Confit in face-up attack position, and he's going to get uh, uh, 3,300 damage taken to the face, but uh, he's going to go ahead and declare win. It's irrelevant again because it's unaffected. You could just activate the effect, but true Revival of the True Draco King is activated. He's going to summon another monster. It's, again, completely irrelevant. He just wants to see if his opponent can deal with it because, again, uh, most decks out would be Utopia. I mean, even the Enterprise near with 2,900 and the ability to banish, it's not going to do any good. But watch what happens in this, because I like this one. This, there's a surprise ending over here. I didn't expect it. I didn't even remember <laughs> this card was a thing. But anyways, he realized, I guess, he had this card in the extra deck. Uh, but anyways, he's going to go ahead and summon another card. He makes number 92 Heart Earth Dragon. Really cool stuff. I didn't I didn't remember uh, about this card. But anyways, if you guys don't know what the heck this does, it cannot be sure of a battle. Also, your opponent takes all of the battle, battle damage involving this card. During your opponent's end phase, you get to detach material from this card to banish all cards your opponent currently controls that were normal or special summon or were set. Uh, it's unaffected, but it doesn't matter. But And it says this turn. And then if this card is destroyed while it has material, you can special summon this card from the graveyard. When you do it, it gains a thousand attack for every card currently banished. 
It's a really cool card, uh, but nonetheless, yeah, this can be a very big threat for certain decks. Is this deck going to be very good with this playstyle? I don't think so, because you use, like, every single card you had. You use five monsters, and then you use, like, poly. That's, that's like, six cards. Uh, I mean, it is six cards, but uh, pretty much you can get, like, an extra, I guess, plus one off of, like, Pot of Desires or something like that. But I know some of you guys are interested in maybe trying out the Lyrical Lucinias yourself, but uh, like I said, that, that was a really cool ending. I enjoyed that. But, uh, yeah, Lyrical Lucinias, uh, I don't know if you guys are gonna, like, be interested in playing this deck, because I think it's more of a fun deck than anything, but all it really comes down to, guys, it's a rank one spam deck. I was thinking you could also run, like, cards like Battle Fader in here. I thought that would have been uh, a decent little uh, addition to it. Uh, also, uh, my suggestion for you guys, I wanted to keep it original, as you guys saw in the replay, but I think we can make this deck a little bit better. If you guys really want to cheese out your opponent, make that first turn instant win, I think a much better option would be making other things... Uh, whether you're gonna go ahead and make like Valor, like Valor could be a great option uh, for this deck, uh, or anything in general just to deal with uh, Utopia, because that's pretty much what's gonna be the problem. I mean, you could run cards like uh, Vanny's Envenus, but without the other back row, it's always gonna get hit. But uh, I mean, you guys can go with the Soul Strikes if you want. But I overall think that you need to just stop the uh, uh, Utopia from coming out. I know the Kaijus you can't really do too much against. I know you can stop Special Summoning, but for the most part, uh, it's going to lock you out of the game as well. But I think uh, uh, the Kaijus are kind of a, uh, an archetype where you, you can't really play around them too much. But nonetheless, uh, yeah, let's get started with the deck profile really quick because uh, it's pretty solid. Like, it's basically a, level, a bunch of level 1 monsters, so... First up, we got King Ka Bio. So when this one's summoned, you get to actually bring back another level one monster. Then we got three copies of Evil Thorn. So you can tribute this card and inflict 300 damage to your opponent. Wow! Uh, and then, but the most important part is to summon up to two more Evil Thorns from your deck. Kind of sucks if you draw them, but uh, nonetheless, uh, like drawing multiple, that is. Uh, this is just like a plus one, essentially, is what it does. The Wind Witch Snow Bell. So if only monster you control or uh, wind monster, you just spout a summon from your hand. Uh, really good stuff, and even they're all win, so it's pretty easy in the deck. Then we have three copies of Turquoise, who so control the monsters, spell summon it just like Cyber Dragon. They also have technically a bonus effects. If this card is spell someone from the hand, you can spell someone one from the, the hand or graveyard. Uh, is her effect, and then we have Swallow, my favorite one, uh, over here, uh, if you control a Winged Beast monster, you just special summon this card, and one level Winged Beast monster from your hand, so you can get double out once again with that, and then if it is, uh, XYZ summoned, like, using this card as material, you get to target one Lyrical Lucina monster in Graveyard, and attach that monster to it as material, but this one is more of an all-in cheesy kind of a deck, similar to, like, a first turn Towers, it's, it's heavily invested into that one play, although with Cleese, if you had models, you get to drill through three at the end of the turn so like it was kind of better in that sense but next up we have cobalt so um this one if it is special summon you get to add one level wing beast monster from your deck to your hand so there, there's the plus one uh at that point and then also your opponent cannot target uh, this card with card effects, meaning the Exceed monster, but it, it's irrelevant because you're going to fusion for this card anyways. Then we got two copies of Jester Confit, so you can just special summon it, and that's it for that guy. This this card over here, Mystic Piper, uh, you can tribute this card to uh, draw another card. So it's kind of like a cycling card, uh, but if you draw another level one, you can draw an additional card. So you can draw uh, extra free cards from Piper. Then we got three copies of Instant Fusion. Uh, really good card to grab with it is Thousand Eyes, because Thousand Eyes absorbs a monster, and then on top of that, you're going to be able to, of course, just use it as material uh, for the uh, new Lyrical Lucina Independent Nightingale. And then we got one for one. I got tons and tons of target for that. Then we got two copies of Poly, uh, three copies of Fusion Sage, uh, which is basically just more copies of Poly. If you guys are really running into inconsistency issues, you can also technically do King of the Swamp, uh, but I feel like uh, at, at the moment, like six is pretty good. That's basically six copies of Poly. And then I have three copies of Where Art Thou. So I uh, just get to add one level one monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, you have to control one, but don't worry. That's pretty easy to do in this deck. We also have Soul Charge for a rebuttal play. So if everything goes bad, they somehow get over this. They Utopia you. You have like another one card to try to make something else that's really good. And then you can try to win if your play goes south. Uh, and then we have two copies of Com Cosmic Cyclone to get rid of the uh, back row. And then three copies of Solemn Strike. For the extra deck, uh, most important card. I feel like you only really need two of them. I think two is optimal number. But uh, nonetheless, uh, two co two or three copies, depending on your choice. Uh, the Independent Nighting Gale, the new card. Then triple copy of Thousand Eyes Strict. Uh, three copies of Recite Starling. Uh, two copies of Utopic Future. 
three copies of Assembly Nightingale. This is like the really annoying card that you, people used to make and then to attack you. If you guys haven't seen this card in action, I have a video. It got a decent amount of views too. So if you guys want to see like that build of it, uh, that builds in the uh, video as well. But uh, this is a turbo version of Independent Nightingale. Do you guys think it's good? You guys let me know down below. I feel like it has the same problem as like the, the, the towers. Like it just loses to Utopia. But I guess every deck in 2016 has a tower. We got the BES. They have new tower deck. We got the new Lyrical Lucina. Is this new like tower deck just like why does every deck not Konami not every archetype means that you can't be destroyed unaffected by everything and it's got massive attack only to lose to lose to Utopia Lightning although against BES it can't be destroyed by battle so maybe B BES can beat Lyrical Lucina I don't know I, this one doesn't have to burn though this one can counter a lot of things it's, it's crazy but anyways you guys let me know your thoughts down below in that comment section below but thanks for watching guys and if you enjoyed the vid make sure you guys get a like button a titty slap and I am signing out